When I came to CHKD to interview, it became very apparent to me that there was an energy that was pervasive and frankly palpable throughout the hospital. I've always wanted to work with kids and I remember driving by CHKD when I was little and telling my mom that I was gonna work there eventually. I came to CHKD to be part of a team. This team is focused on building the best possible care for children. What brought me and what has kept me here at CHKD is a sense of belonging and purpose. I chose to come and work at CHKD because I wanted to be part of such a committed, hardworking, dedicated team. Growing up, um, CHKD was reputable in the community, providing great care, even to my own children. And I wanted to be a part of that leading healthcare system. I just really appreciate the dedication that CHKD has to pediatric mental health. We see that with this new mental health hospital that's being built, and so the devotion to that I think is incredible. Our hospital is gonna be unique in nature throughout the state and our region because we're gonna be able to take care of children with complex medical and psychiatric needs. I am thrilled, excited, and hopeful about the mental health hospital that we're opening. Children will have quality mental health services and that will help to create happier and healthier lives. The mental health expansion here at CHKD is really building from the ground up. We don't have something that we are working from. We're starting a lot of things from scratch. There is going to be a basketball court, there's a gymnasium, there's a music recording studio, there's art therapy that's going to be involved. I am thrilled about CHKD's new mental health hospital. This hospital is actually more than a hospital, it's a mental health system. It's a really uh, exciting opportunity to build a whole system of care. I am fortunate enough to live fairly close to the hospital and I love riding my bike to work. I've been able to do it year round. In other places, I would not be able to do that, but here the weather is very good and allows that. I love the museums, the great beaches, the beautiful weather, the people are wonderful. From Virginia Beach having the oceanfront to Norfolk having the nightlife of Granby Street and Waterside District to the professional opportunities that it offers as well. I just really appreciate all the parks and all the outdoor activities that Hampton Roads has to offer. For myself and my family, this has just been a, a wonderful find and, and we very much enjoy living in Hampton Roads. Good morning, everyone. There we go. Good morning, everyone again. My name is Jack Warburton. Um, I am truly honored to serve currently as the Vice President for the Mental Health Service Line at Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters, which is better known as CHKD, located in beautiful Norfolk, Virginia, as you saw in that introductory video. Uh, I'm also very pleased to introduce our opening keynote speaker this morning. Uh, we all see we're in the middle of a, a year and a half like no other. So every now and again, we really do have to remember to take a break from the stress of life. So that's exactly how we want to kick off today's summit. With a little stress relief in the form of stigma and furthering the conversation about mental health in our society. Founded by award-winning counselor and stand-up comic, David Grenier, who himself is a person living with depression, Stand Up for Mental Health teaches stand-up comedy to people living with mental health and substance use disorders. David has run his program in over 50. Cities in Canada, the U.S. General of Canada. So without further ado, here he is, along with his all-star comics, to talk openly about the funny side of their mental health journey. Welcome to the virtual stage, David. Hey, thanks. You know, so here, folks, here, folks, I have a favor to ask all of you. We can see your little squares. Some of them are dark. I'm asking you to all unmute and turn on your video cameras so we can see and hear you laugh, because that makes a huge difference to us. Plus, if we can't see or hear anyone laugh, it's like we're talking to ourselves <laughs> and they can commit you for that. <laughs> 
So they, uh, I know we've had, you know, we've had COVID, you folks are online. It's, it's changed a lot of things here and in, in, we're from Vancouver, Canada. And my son is home from university and all their courses are online. And the other day he's like, dad, yesterday I researched iambic pentameter of the middle ages. And I'm like, um, how about you research how not to live in your parents' basement till you're 30? <laughs> <laughs> and instead of cuisine of the ancient Visigoths, how about you research how to take out the garbage and unload the dishwasher? <laughs> But things have been kind of weird around here. We just had our, our hot water tank just died. And so we had you know, the plumbers in and I was giving like a Zoom thing uh, at the time. And people are like, what's that sound? And I'm like, um, that's the sound of drilling and my bank account being drained. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, folks, feel free to leave comments in the chat, what you like, what you thought was funny. That just <clears> gives <throat> us more energy to carry on. But let's get to the mental health part of this. So as you folks know, they call us now people with a lived experience of a mental health diagnosis. But they never say the whole sentence. They just say people with lived experience because they're hoping that if we leave the words mental and diagnosis to the end, people won't realize that we're talking about mental illness. And we've succeeded because now they don't realize what we're talking about at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'm on medication and I, I've taken so many meds. It's actually gotten to the point where I'm now taking medication that I've already been on. It's like watching Game of Thrones reruns and thinking well you know this did not end well but the producers assure me that if i watch the same show again it will have a different outcome and they're <laughs> right because now i watch the same episode and i'm so sedated i watch the same episode and i just <laughs> think it had a different ending <laughs> but i've been on so many minutes and i've decided i don't even care if they work anymore i just want the ones with the coolest names and they all have x's in them like paxil fluvox Trintelex. I can just see the marketing people, you know, the, the, the research people like, ah, you know, we'll just stuff these capsules with baking soda. Let the marketing people come up with a cool name with lots of X's. And the next day, the CEO is like, we'd like to introduce our next drug, Exodexodex. <laughs> and that will be followed up by our next blockbuster drug, Exodexodexodexodexodex. <laughs> like 17 X's, kind of like my score on a high school math test. <laughs> but there was actually a medication. Okay, they researched it and they found that it made mice. This was an antidepressant that made mice swim faster. So millions of dollars of research, and now we have mice capable of winning gold in the Olympic 100 meter backstroke. But you're not a very effective Olympian if your competitors can stop you from getting to the podium by stomping on you. <laughs> you know, you hear four crunches and it's like, well, there goes the freestyle relay team. Yes. <laughs> but they should have a mental health triathlon. It would consist of taking your psych meds and still remembering your name. <laughs> Making it to one out of eight DBT sessions <laughs> and being able to correctly spell DBT <laughs> two out of three times during the same six week period. But before I bring on our first comic, uh, I just tell you one more thing. So I think it's really important to be honest about what we've been through. I myself have been suicidal. I've attempted suicide and people are afraid of those words. I had someone say, but if, if I use those words, I'll give you ideas. And I'm like, listen, yeah. dude, I use the words mow the lawn to my mm. son every day for eight years. Mm. And it never gave him any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> So folks, your first comic, she is the spokesperson for our non-existent sponsor, Delicious Diagnoses Ice Cream Parlor. Please give it up for April soon. Big round of applause, big virtual round of applause. Good morning, Virginia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This past year has been tough on everybody. Have you been trying getting, have you been having difficulty getting an appointment to see a mental health professional? Need help right away? Welcome to my trending new business, Delicious Diagnoses Ice Cream Parlor. We have 265 
different ice creams, which coincidentally exactly matches the number of documented mental health disorders. So come on in. Choose your first scoop from a variety of flavors, such as dark chocolate, deep depression despair, bipolar butterprickle, or maybe mint mania. <laughs> then my staff will diagnose your disorder and treat your mental health issue by giving you a second scoop, like pistachio Prozac, double <laughs> Dutch dexedrin, or almond and adivan. <laughs> Included in the price is your choice of one topping or a Wellbutrin waffle cone. <laughs> Here at Delicious Diagnoses, we hand out a psychiatric double scoop. Ice cream made for the mentally lactose intolerant too. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, we offer SSRPs, soy substitute re-cupcake prohibitors. <laughs> For those of you who suffer from negative cognitive distortions, such as catastrophizing or fortune telling, we have extra special toppings. You have a choice of unicorn rainbow sprinkles, no nuts, peanuts, and hot mess fudge. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and if you have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, <clears throat> we'll let you make us pick out all the red sprinkles. And then just her, <laughs> you can oh, check it 3,742 <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> We even might have antipsychotic ice cream sandwiches. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, we don't actually sell ice cream sandwiches, <laughs> but customers having a psychotic episode never believe me. <laughs> <laughs> then again, every once in a while, I find myself eating one too. <laughs> or how would you like a side effects shake? Our shakes come in these three decadent flavors. Tutti Fruity Trazodone Tremors, <laughs> Strawberry Swirl Social Stigma, mm. and my personal favorite, Cookie Dough Sexual Dysfunction. Oh. <laughs> hey, bring a date, because right now we have a two for one special on codependent relationship chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we even have a spontaneous meditation session facilitated by our master ice cream gurus, Ben and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about Delicious Diagnosis Ice Cream Parlor is that unlike your psychiatrist, we actually listen to customer feedback. Mm. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Jack Warburton, you groaned? You like your psychiatrist? No <laughs> ice cream for you. <laughs> <laughs> Some conditions and restrictions apply. The first diagnostic scoop is free, but none of the treatments of delicious diagnoses are covered by Medicaid. Oh, and I forgot about the copay. Oh. <laughs> if you don't have a cognitive distortion, you've got to bring your own sprinkles. <laughs> we also carry special mental health gifts too, such as an anger management desk calendar with rubberized paper to achieve maximum frustration where you tear off the day's page, rip it into a million tiny pieces, and then burn it! <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a free mini torch. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> mm -mm. So you do not have to wait three months for psych help. Come on oh. down to Delicious Diagnoses Ice Cream Parlor and find out what the real scoop is. We won't desert you. Ah. <laughs> okay, we'll give it up for April soon. Another round of applause. Thanks, the mini torch. Wonderful stuff. And I'm just gonna move right on to your next comic. Mm -hmm. Please welcome Philomena Black. Give it up for Philomena Black. Yay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. 
Morning. Yes, I am I'm Filomena. And uh, when people find out I'm Italian, they ask, is your family part of the mafia? <laughs> eh, no, 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 no. We are, we are not the, the, the business uh, to remove uh, the waste. <laughs> the <beach? laughs> Someone came up to me and said, your jokes are too violent. So I punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> At one point in my life, things got so bad that I called the crisis line. And I said, I, want, I think I want to do myself in. <laughs> and the guy at the other end said, call us back when you're sure. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> when I became disabled, I hired someone to help me with housework. And the first thing she said was, what a dump. Mm. Oh, I don't remember signing up for the mother-in-law experience. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to marry Prince Charles. And that's when I knew. Oh, Sierra. I was doing it 23 years ago. I can remember I was on the set. Okay. Hey, you guys, someone's got a um, something going on in the background. If you could mute yourself while you have conversations in the background. And, and Jennifer, maybe you can scroll up and down and see if you can find that person. Because... Um, uh, or am I the only person hearing that voice? No, no. I no, 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 it's bad. <laughs> okay. We could start heckling them. Yeah, I thought I okay, yeah, so Jennifer, you want to scroll through people and see if you can find. Um, yeah, because we just. Uh, oh, someone else is also. Gosh. I can't believe it. We are being heckled over Zoom, people. We are being heckled by a disembodied voice over Zoom. This is truly the low point in our comedy career, okay? I want you to realize it's like quarter after seven in the morning here. It's, it's worse. Anyhow, Philomena, why don't you just try continue? Just, just continue? Okay. Yeah. When I was a kid, I wanted to marry Prince Charles. And that's when I knew I had a mental illness. Okay. <laughs> I got bullied a lot when I was in school. And after all these years, there's only one thing that I'd like to say to those girls. At least I still fit in the locker. <laughs> 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 my ex-husband threatened to disappear forever if I didn't marry him. Talk about missed opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> I tried getting revenge on my ex-husband by spitting on his car, but I missed. I'm not very good at revenge spitting, so I outsourced it. I hired a spit man. <laughs> uh, by the way if my ex-husband is watching i'm talking about my other ex-husband <laughs> i've been working as an extra lately and at first i was cast as a glamorous upper class woman but gradually the parts yeah. devolved to less prestigious roles for example i went from a half dead zombie to a full dead zombie, and now I'm playing a corpse. <laughs> the bad news is that my self-esteem has suffered. But the good news is that I get paid extra for playing a corpse because it's considered a special skill. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it like to be an escort, but they freaked out when I told them that I only take groups of 10. I guess, I guess that's what happens when you join Groupon. 
Do you ever meet people that make you wonder how the heck did they live so long? Not because of their lifestyle, but because they're asses. <laughs> Talking about my mother-in-law. <laughs> I, offered, I once offered my mother-in-law some fresh vegetables from my garden. She snapped, I only eat fresh, clean food from the oh, store, God. not that crap that grows in dirt. <laughs> uh. All vegetables grow in dirt. Huh. I'm going right over to Safeway and complain to the manager. Uh, what about this corn then? I grew it from seed in my hydroponic toilet. <laughs> By the way, if my ex mother in law is watching this, I'm talking about my other ex mother in law. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. All right, Philomena Black. Good morning. Thank you. So let me just leave you with a few thoughts here. I have, a, I have a vision of where we need to be as a society. And that vision is so people will be working together in a workplace. Someone comes in one day and says, you know, I have a headache and it's, it's no big deal. Everyone can handle it. They say stuff like, can I get you an aspirin? Would you like some tea? Do you need to sit down? Someone needs to be able to go into that exact same workplace and say, you know something, my voices are a bit loud today, or I'm right on the edge of a panic attack and it needs to be greeted exactly the same. No big deal. Yeah. Everyone can handle it. Would you like a tea, an aspirin? Do you need to sit down, maybe take the afternoon off? And the gap yeah. between where we are and where we need to be, that's where all the prejudice and the stigma and the discrimination lies that we here at Stand Up For Mental Health are trying to educate people about. When I was first hospitalized, it was the late seventies. Nobody talked about mental health or mental illness back then, but the silence the silence said it all. The silence said, this is a horrible, awful thing. Don't you ever speak of this to anyone. And when I left that psych ward, I felt broken. I felt like I would never be whole. I felt so ashamed of myself. I would actually see people that I knew previous to being hospitalized walking down the street towards me and I would run around the block to hide from them. I did not want to be seen. I said over and over in my head, I'm nothing. I am nobody. I am invisible. And that's how I lived for almost 20 years. And now I fast forward to today. And I think what a difference it would have made in my life to see folks like you saw just now doing stand up comedy. I thought, wow, this is proof that recovery is possible. And if these folks can do something like that, I bet I can do something like that too, even if my thing isn't stand-up comedy. So we are on the web at standupformentalhealth.com. There are dozens of videos of comics that I've trained throughout North America and Australia. So it's a great resource for when you want to laugh. If you know someone that's going through a rough time, tell them. I know that right now you may feel like you will never get better because that's how it feels. But take a look at these videos. Look what's possible. And if these folks can do it, so can you. And take a look at our videos. I mean, we put up a, we'll put up a cool video of like, you know, someone doing stand-up will get like 382 hits. And it's so discouraging when at the same time, a video like cat riding vacuum cleaner gets 4 million and 20 hits. You know, of course, 250,000 of them are mine at four in the morning. But actually, our cat, our cat is depressed. Um, we knew we could tell one day we came down uh, one morning and she had written a, a suicide note in her litter box. Um, but it was hard to read because it all clumped together. It's so gross. <laughs> but um, anyhow, I am available to do virtual shows with my comics. I do keynote speaking at conferences on my own all over the world. I'm also available if you would like me to train a group of comics for your organization and then put on a show in your community, standupformentalhealth.com. And I will leave you with one thought. So workplaces are always looking for ways to boost morale. And there is one workplace, and this is told you to boost morale. They have naked Fridays where everyone comes to school 
work naked. <laughs> Because <laughs> nothing boosts morale more than seeing a flabby middle-aged guy give a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and I can just see the naked workplace. You know, it's Friday morning. Okay, guys, we got the big client meeting this afternoon. What's the best thing we can do to get their business? Um, I don't know. Tell them to come back on Monday. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, folks, thank you so much. You have been an awesome audience and have a great rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>